down to the Whitney Museum and um, there was a permanent collections exhibition with Ed Keenholz's work and Lucas Samaras, whose work I, I really loved so much uh, as well. So I noticed in the yellow pages that Lucas Samaras was listed, so I gave him a call also, <laughs> and he answered the phone. And um, I said, oh, Mr. Samaras, I just love your work so much. And then he started grilling me. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because I love the, the plant, the plastic plants on the chair pieces that you've been making and that you had in the exhibition at the Whitney. Why? Because I love the plastic flower piece that you did on the chair that was really intense all over it, sewn and glued, and, and it looked really haunting. Why? Because I love those nail pieces that you put on the chairs that are really spiky and you couldn't sit on the chair at all. Why? Because I love your self-portrait Polaroids. Why? Because you're a brilliant artist. Why? Because I love the assemblage quality. Why? Because they're really fabulous pieces. Why? Because they're really intense. Why? Because um, you're a wonderful artist. Why? Because uh, I love assemblage and collage and I love your sculptural pieces. Why? Oh, because, 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 I'm sorry. I hung up the phone. The next year, I came back to New York and I looked up Andy Warhol's number in the factory and someone else answered the phone, and I said, oh, please, can I speak to Andy Warhol? He's not here. Oh, well, he invited me to come to the factory. No visitors. Click. <laughs> and then I looked for Lucas Samaras' number, and he was no longer listed. <laughs> so I started going back and forth more and more between Los Angeles and New York, and I showed with Molly Barnes Gallery, um, I had the back room, and uh, Mar Marco Stabi had the front room, and then he was going to New York to start showing with the East Village galleries. And then I started also going to New York and, at that time, and I did a, a solo show with Monique Milton. I had the back room, and Allison Saar had the front room. Um, and at that time, I um, showed with the fun gallery, and um, did a window installation, and met um, Jean-Michel Basquiat. He was really nice and really good looking. <laughs> really nice person, really sweet. And um, then I showed at the Limbo Lounge Gallery a solo exhibition of big ties. And I had done a series of neckties that were uh, a vinyl with collage and assemblage and painting of movie stars and pop stars from the 50s and 60s. I showed them at the LA, at, um, the New Orleans Contemporary Art Museum, and I got an honorarium for $1,000, but then it turned into $500 because they cut the honorarium in half. So I bought an expensive crate, and the crate with the ties went to the museum, but I didn't have the money to go. And then um, I met someone from the French consulate who gave me a solo exhibition in Paris with the same ties. And so I had another crate built, and I sent that with the ties to the show in Paris, but I didn't have the money to fly over. And the owner got pissed at me, and then after the show ended, he threw the ties haphazardly, all jumbled up, into a cardboard box and shifted to Germany. And so I lost that series. In the meantime, Lutze had been smoking in bed, and she was drunk, and she burned up her whole apartment, the Copleys, the Gordon Monta Clarks, and my series. So I lost two major series of works from the 70s. And then her friend Roberta Cowderer shipped her back to Berlin where she drank herself to death. Well, Roberta gave, um, introduced me to some friends of hers who opened a gallery in, in Dusseldorf, Ida Gallery. So I showed with them. and and got to go to Germany for five weeks and spent three of the five weeks in Berlin seeing the wall coming down. So that was really interesting. And then going from east to west through Point Charlie, 
the guards were listening to Michael Jackson music. That was really a trip. With all this chaos going around, and um, so I went to Dahlem and I went to the Bauhaus, and it was really fabulous. I loved Berlin. It was it was a, a very interesting time, and it was hard to get your money changed. There was only one bank, and people were trying to madly change marks, and um, people from the east, from Poland, were coming over trying to do black marketing with the money. So that was something in itself too. Um, I want to go back in time to when I was 15 in high school and my mother introduced me to somebody who was an actor agent of friend of hers that she had met at, Queen, at um, Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. She had worked there when we first came from Europe as a nurse and she would say to her patients, which were movie stars, and producers, make my doctor into a movie star, my beautiful doctor, Simon, I will do anything. I will do anything if you make her into a movie star. Well, this um, agent comic was a friend of my mother's that she had met at the hospital. And I was in my bedroom, sitting down, working on my monologue that I was preparing for Lorene Tuttle, who was a famous comic, uh, no, no, she was a famous character actress for many, many years, and she had an acting workshop, and I'd been introduced to her, so <clears throat> anyway, I was focusing on my monologue in my room, my mother opens the door and she said, Simon, here's Monty, Monty, come in and meet Simon, and then she closed the door. And he looks at me and he goes, do your monologue for me. Hello, Chucky? It's me. Um, I need to tell you something. I'm, 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 I'm pregnant! Hello? 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 Click. He hung up. Oh, doll face, you have a lot of fire in you. Put your coat on. Betty? Robert? I'd like to shoot the fat kosher, of course, but I'm taking Simone to a photo shoot. Come on, Simone, let's go. So we drove to the Sunset Towers apartment building, which is a big, beautiful Art Deco facade. And then we got out of the car. We walked him down the hall into his apartment. It was a bachelor pad. Closes the door. He walks me in. And he says, sit down. <laughs> 